Well, if, you, if this is your first time with us during the month of January, we're starting off this year with a series we've entitled Stronger. It's based on Hebrews 12:12 12, 12, that we're supposed to take a new grip with our tired hands and strengthen our weak knees. I mean, and when you're talking about climbing a cliff face like you saw in that little video, the people that are climbing there wear this bag behind uh, on, around their waist and they reach in it when they're climbing up because inside this bag it's called a chalk bag because there's all kinds of chalk in there and when you're halfway up a cliff face and your hands get sweaty I need the chalk because I want to take a new grip I don't want to fall off well the writer of Hebrews when he's saying hey strengthen your weak knees and your tired hands take a new grip with your tired hands this seemed like a good metaphor for that of what he's talking about so every lesson we're talking about in this series is to help us get a stronger grip on something last week we talked about how to get a stronger grip on your time and your money and inside your bulletin uh, inside the jacket there you'll find out if you'd like to get a stronger grip on your finances man we have financial peace university a class coming up starting up in february here please sign up for that it's life-changing um, but today we're going to talk about how to get a stronger grip and man, I got chalk all over me anyway, um, how to get a stronger grip on your prayer life. Now, some of us have a great prayer life. We go, oh, I know how to pray. I love praying. Some of us we go, yeah, I've never gotten the hang of that. I don't know. And I mean, Deb, you and I talked about it. You didn't grow up necessarily learning how to pray. Neither did I. No, I, I knew how to read my Bible, and I, I loved that. I enjoyed that. I would always get a lot out of it. But my prayer life was pretty simple. It was pretty much just praying for every problem that I could think of. And um, honestly, if you had put me in the room and said, um, pray for an hour, I would have just fallen asleep, twiddled my thumbs. Um, I don't know how to do that. So anyway, we're so excited about this lesson this morning because it honestly, it has changed my life. It is completely changed my life. I've learned um, so many things about prayer, and in doing so, I've just gotten, I've fallen in love with Jesus over and over and over again. And so that's what our hope is this morning. Yeah, so inside your bulletin, you'll find that the outline is really just a prayer guide that we hope you'll take home and experiment with. And uh, if it helps you, use it. Um, and so there's 12 different sections to it. This all was inspired by about five years ago, I went on a Samaritan's Purse trip uh, where they do disaster relief and it was after cleaning up after a hurricane. And every evening they would have sessions for the volunteers and they have devotional times and other things. And one of the people who got up to lead some of the sessions, a woman there, I mean, she would pray these heartfelt, amazing prayers. Like whew, the words she used were just perfect. And I just go, I walked up to her after I'd heard her pray a couple times. I go, okay, wh where did you learn to pray like that? She goes, oh, I got this little booklet. It's, it's uh, how to pray for an hour. And it's like Debbie's like, oh, I can't pray for an hour. And she goes, no, the, the writer of this booklet, and there's many other books just like this, but this one's called The Miracle Hour. At the end of your outline, there's, you could order it online on Amazon or a bookstore, anywhere you want. But the point is, they broke it up, the writer broke up the hour into five minute segments, into 12 five minute segments. And if you spent five minutes on each of these segments, it would change your life because you'd be praying about things you'd never even considered praying about before. And remember, I came home and showed you this. Yeah. And then we started doing this. And so this is our version of this. It's not a whole booklet. The booklet goes into a lot more depth, but this is really just for, you know, for us to consider today. You don't have to pray for a whole hour. You could use one of these sections. As we go through this today, our prayer would be, as we go through this today, if there's one of these sections that you've never considered praying about before, you'd take five minutes and pray about that. Or you'd use this prayer guide, mark it up, and pray for two things today, two things tomorrow, and six days you would have gone through all of it. But the idea behind it would be, what if all of a sudden I discovered there's whole areas of my life to talk about with God where I can speak to him and listen to him and I've never considered doing this, ever. Even if I've been a Christian for dozens of years. Well, then all of a sudden it's life changing because it's like, remember, my relationship with God just got a whole lot deeper. Yeah, it's so much more than just academics or theology. All of a sudden, you have this growing, thriving relationship with the creator of the universe. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So would you pray for us, please? Yes, let's pray together. Holy Father, I, I thank you and I praise you for this morning, a time where we could come and encourage each other and talk about you and speak to you and hear from you. 
So Lord, I just pray for this time. Would you teach us what we, you want us to learn? Holy Spirit, would you come and guide our conversation? I pray that you would bless this time. It's the name of Jesus that we ask these things. Amen. Amen. So here are 12 things we can do to strengthen our time with God in prayer. First of all, there's scripture reflection. All scripture, this is 2 Timothy 3.16. Paul wrote this to his disciple Timothy. All scripture is inspired by God. It's useful to teach us what's true, make us realize what's wrong in our lives, corrects us when we're wrong, teaches us to do what's right. You will hear us over and over again say, hey, we want to help you learn how to read the Bible. I'm going to talk uh, next week on how to strengthen our grip on our faith, how to have more faith. A big part of that is going to be uh, reading the scripture. So we'll talk more about that next week. But I just want to say how important it is that if I'm going to start out, think about this. If I'm meeting with the creator God of the universe and he's given me his word and I read a little bit of it and mark some things and write down a couple of things that he said to me that day, I'm letting him get the first word. I mean, I want to know what he has to say to me. And that's why it's at the top of the list. You could do that any part of your prayer life, but how great, how cool is it that the God of the universe wants to meet with you and me and he has something to share with me and with you. And he speaks to you through your Bible reading, right? Sure. Always before I read, I always say, Lord, just teach me. Show me what you want me to learn. And that's good. He always does. Yeah. And sometimes it's an encouragement. I go, oh, this is what he's already doing. Other times it's like, oh yeah, that's way out of line. We'll talk about that, how to adjust it when it is. Secondly, then it's just spending a, uh, five minutes. Remember, if you just spend a few minutes just preparing my heart for prayer, not just praying only while I'm driving to work, eating a breakfast sandwich, going, dear God, please help me hit the green light because I overslept. Amen. <laughs> that kind of prayer. But where I'm actually praying and I'm sitting down and I'm going to get myself collected and calm so that I can pray. For me, this involves, you'll see some instructions there, it involves like having a legal pad or a notepad or something where when I wake up a lot of times, I wake up in the morning and everything I've got to do that day, lots of concerns here from the church because somebody might've passed away or somebody's having marriage issues or somebody's sick in the hospital or there's all this going on and then we've got this big event coming. I wake up and all those things come rushing at me like wild animals as soon as I wake up. Does this happen to anybody else besides me? Okay, two of us. Good. Okay, anyway, <laughs> this is what happens. So for me, I need to get a legal pad for me to get my brain clear. I need to write those things out and say, these are things I'm going to pray about. There's plenty of places in this guide you'll see to address all those things, but I need to write it, put them here like they're in a parking lot so I can say, okay, I'll deal with those at the right time. But right now, I need to, folk, I need to have peace and I need to sit still. What do you do? Yeah, I don't do that at all. Um, I, the, Great. <laughs> I, my brain is a bit slower than when I need some coffee, and I, I slowly move into the, the prayer time. But for me, it's like having a date. It's like I know where I want to go to pray. I have a little room. I can shut the door. I can pray out loud. Nobody's listening. It doesn't feel strange at all because I'm by myself. And I love that. I don't want my phone in there. I don't want any distractions because I'm easily distracted. So I'm like, okay, this is my space. And so that's kind of how I prepare my heart. I get to a place of quiet so I can become quiet. Would you read Psalm 116, one and two? Sure. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy because he bends down to listen. I will pray as long as I have breath. I mean, what if that described you and me? And here's what's funny. I started going through this little booklet and doing some of these things. And, and it's in the booklet, it tells you, hey, come up with your own version of these. That's what you're seeing here. Um, here's what's funny. The more I pray, the more I want to pray. Yeah. And I think that's what we both found. We went, I've never even prayed about some of this stuff before. But the more I pray about it, the more I want to pray about it. And there's sometimes I'll start to pray and I'll, I'll look at my watch and I think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I prayed that long. So it, it just... The time just flies. Yeah. Thirdly, praise. And you'll see how these are all related. Um, let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I'll praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Then what I've given you here is a little list of characteristics of God. Um, and if I want to praise God, well, what would I say if I was going to praise God? Well, I could say this. I praise you, Lord, because you are all powerful. 
I praise you, Lord, because you are all-knowing. I praise you, Lord, because you are everywhere. Well, why is this important? Well, think about this. I'm going to present all these requests to God that I was writing down before. I'm going to present them in just a few minutes. But what if before I did that, I reminded myself, who am I talking to? And if I'm talking to somebody who's all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere, well, then what situation am I going to deal with that he can't handle? I mean, he knows everything. He'll know the answer to the problems that I can't even understand. And he's everywhere. So wherever I go today, he's going to be there. And he's all-powerful, so there's nothing he can't handle. Well, that changes the way I pray. Instead of just ranting about how bad my life is, Dear God, this isn't right. I'm mad. Fix it. Amen. Well, that's not really the way we ought to talk to God. So it makes a difference that we praise him. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Um, I always get in my brain just that picture and revelation of the throne room of heaven. And creatures and, and people are bowing before God himself, the great I am. And to me, I mean, how can I walk into prayer and not want to fall on my knees or not want to praise him or recognize who he is? What an incredible privilege to be able to communicate with him. Yeah, and that's why in these instructions, it even says read out loud. And while you go in a room and close the door and pray out loud, let me encourage you. There's a difference between praying silently and praying out loud. Can God understand our thoughts? Of course he can. But when you pray out loud to God, you are talking to God out loud like you would a real person. I talk out loud to Debbie. I don't just think she's beautiful. I didn't get it. I need to hear it. She needs to hear it. I say, wow, you're beautiful. Say it again. I'm just kidding. Wow, you're beautiful. Okay. But the point, you get the idea. If I say it, If I want to praise somebody, I got to say it. Well, God can read my thoughts. I don't have to say it out loud to him. No, but let me tell you the difference. When I say it out loud, I'm treating God like a real person. God is a real person. He's real. And when you talk to him, he's real. This is not imaginary. He's not our imaginary friend. John, the other thing, when you you speak out loud, you are fully engaged. You're not falling asleep while you're talking out loud. So for me, it helps me to stay completely engaged with what I'm doing. Yeah, so these are things you can praise him for. By the way, gave you lots of scripture references. If you want to keep things fresh instead of just reading through this, look up one or two of those verses each day and read them out loud to God and say, I praise you for this, Lord. It's life-changing. I promise you, if you've never done this before, you're going to love it. It'll make you, it'll help you fall in love with God all over again in a whole new way. Then sing to the Lord is related to this because there's a lot of Christian songs that are written about just what we're talking about, praising him. That's why we sing praise songs here on Sunday mornings. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. This is Psalm 95. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. This is as simple as taking your cell phone and putting your uh, headphones on and singing along to a praise song. I do that virtually every day. I sing a couple of songs, and I sound really good when I'm wearing headphones. Uh, No comment. Yeah. Remember, you're in a room by yourself, okay? But usually you even go walk. Yeah, and and a lot of times I do prayer walks when it's not raining or other things. I love to walk. I go find trails or other places where nobody is, and I talk to God out loud the same way as if I was walking beside somebody else. He's right there, right? Why can't I talk to him? I can't. And it helps me talk to him like he's a real person. And I sing to him. Oh, singing moves our theology from our head to our heart. We're supposed to worship God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The whole package. Singing helps us do that. Don't dismiss this. I mean, we're going to sing a lot in heaven. Might as well get our vocal cords warmed up. It's important. It really is. Fifthly, spiritual warfare. What are you talking about? Well, the Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion. Peter said he's like a roaring lion looking for souls to devour. Paul says in this passage in Ephesians 6, we better be on our guard and we better pray about this. 
Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Did you know the devil is strategizing against, your, uh, against you this week? He is. He'd love to mess up your marriage. He'd love to mess up your relationship with your kids. He'd love for you to be frustrated at work. He'd love to convince you you are worthless and stupid and sinful and God isn't watching out for you. You are just worth nothing at all. That is what the devil would love to. He'd love to get you discouraged, full of despair, and angry at everybody. Because then you can't glorify God and you can't love God. You're filled with bitterness. Well, we know this. We know that if we spend too much time online, man, we're going to get all kinds of negative stuff. We're going to face lies and deceptions and temptations every single day. Have you prayed about that lady lately? Lord, protect me. The devil is hunting me. He's got strategies. I mean, this is what it says. Put on all of God's armor so you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. We're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of this unseen world. You are. I am. All of us. This is real. Against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll be standing firm. So the, the biggest thing we need to do is, why would we then say, well, if that's happening, oh yeah, I don't ever pray about that. Why not? I mean, look, I'm not trying to scare you here. I mean, Debbie, we even included this 1 John 4.4. 4. Uh, yes. Um, greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. I think that's important to remember. Jesus won the battle against Satan on the cross. So we don't have to be afraid of this. You need to, but let me tell you where you'll get your confidence. You'll get your confidence in scripture. And one of the things that um, I have been reminded of lately as I was reading through Mark is that when Jesus was caught, was out in the wilderness being tempted for 40 days by Satan, he refuted Satan with scripture and Satan left. So empower yourself with scripture. I pray scripture all the time and there's so much power. That's another reason it's, it's important to speak it out loud. Say your scripture, speak it out loud and say, oh, no, no, no. When you're tempted to be afraid or when you're in a scary situation, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. I will not allow fear to come into my life today. Satan, you have no hold on me. That is not who I am. I, I love to read um, Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. I pray all the time. Lord, send your angels to a camp around me. Fight on my behalf. I don't know what's going on in the unseen world, but it doesn't take a genius to see that Satan is working everywhere we go. I mean, he's, he's tempting me. He's, the world feels like it's falling apart at times, and I'll, you can walk right into it. Well, it helps if you struggle with lust, if you struggle with gossip, if you struggle with lying. Get the back of your Bible, find a good concordance, find some scriptures that are meaningful to you, memorize them, speak them out loud. I love Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Satan, no weapon that you have coming against me is going to prosper. So I am covered because of Jesus. I am his child. And so this is a battle that you have to be engaged in. Learn some scripture and, and speak it boldly. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea is it says stand firm. Like, so in your outline there, I actually paraphrased Ephesians 6 verses 14 through 7. Turn it into a prayer. I just read you 10 through 13. Well, the next four verses I put into a prayer. And I pray this virtually every day because it helps me to think about every morning like I'm getting dressed. Today, Lord, I put on the armor you've given me so I can stand my ground against the devil's schemes. I know he's coming at me today. First thing I want to do is put on a belt of truth because I know lies are coming my way. Goodness gracious, all you got to do is get online unless you haven't discovered it. Did you know that not everything on the internet's true? Did you know that? Okay. There are lies coming my way, spin, lies, all kinds of stuff. It's hard to know who to believe. Well, that's why I'm going to trust the Lord and I'm going to put truth on like a belt. I'm also going to put on the breastplate of righteousness. I've been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. I don't want to be a part of wicked, evil things. I've got a helmet of salvation. I know the Lord has saved me. I've got a shield of faith. 
well, how do I use a shield of faith? Well, there are going to be things that come at me like fiery darts from the evil one because there's going to be hardship in my life and disappointing things in my life. And there'll be even people who ask me out loud, I thought you said God loved me. If God loves me, then how come this is happening? Explain that one. And then my faith is something I can use as a shield because I can go, well, my faith reminds me that God allows many difficult things to come in my, in my life. James tells us, consider it joy when you encounter trials of various kinds. They make your faith stronger. And God can use even hard things in my life for my good and for his glory. Well, I've got a shield to protect me then. I don't get destroyed by that. And as Debbie said, I've got the sword of the spirit. I've got God's word. If I use his word correctly, I can fight against these thoughts. This is a battle for my mind, your mind. And I have to stand firm. If you've never prayed about this, we're going to pray a spiritual warfare prayer right now. It's in your outline, Matthew 6, 13. It's one sentence from the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father Prayer, depending on how you grew up. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is a prayer Jesus taught his disciples. This is a spiritual warfare line of prayer. Could we pray that out loud together, please? And, and lead, lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from, from the evil one. one. Amen. You just prayed a spiritual warfare prayer. If you have never prayed about this, does that really make sense? If you believe there's a devil, if you know that there are all kinds of lies and temptations and all sorts of deceptions that are surrounding us, why would I not pray about that every day? God, help me see through things that are false. Remind me of your word. Give me truth righteousness. Give me faith and give me the ability to stand against this using your word. That's the idea. Baby, you better hurry up. I know. Six, surrender. How fitting is that? Anyway, um, <laughs> if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. If you give up your life for my sake, you'll save it. Do you know that sin is deliberately going our own way when we know God has a different way? That's what sin is. We like to define it as a series of actions. It's an attitude of the heart. Deliberately and determinedly saying, I'm going my own way. I don't care what the Bible says. I know, I don't care. That's for other people, not me. You can believe that if you want. I don't care. I'm doing what I want. Surrender is when you say, Lord, I want to do what you want. John, that's when we become conformed to the image of Christ. If something comes up in your brain, it's like, okay, Lord, I, I need to let go of this. I've been trying to control this. It's not what you want. I need to surrender that to you. And as you do that, and he changes you in that area of your life, you become more Christ-like. And so that's where a lot of the joy comes oh. is from letting go of all the things you're trying to handle that you're not doing a very good job with and allowing Christ to handle all the different areas of your life. And it brings you peace. That's why we come to Christ just as we are. You don't got to get cleaned up in order to come to Jesus. You come to Jesus as you are. So he just leaves you that way. Oh no, he's working on you and he's going to show you Piece by piece, day by day, year by year. Hey, you need to surrender your time. You need to surrender your money. You need to surrender your addictions, your failures, your successes, your strengths, your emotions. We have a whole list there. And it's good to read over a list like that and go, Lord, do I need to surrender something to you today? I mean, this is where you got to sit and listen. It's important. Seven, why don't you take the seventh one? Empowerment through the Holy Spirit. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Ordinary people all of a sudden become bold missionaries. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Guide me. Galatians 5.16. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. How do I know where to go? Through the Holy Spirit. Not only, when we come to Christ, not only are our sins forgiven, praise the Lord. He remembers them no more. But Jesus said, I'm going to ask the Father. He'll send the Holy Spirit to you, and he won't just be with you. He'll be in you. He'll empower you. He'll guide you. 
He'll be working in your life. John, so, as you surrender, uh, the Holy Spirit has more freedom to work in and through you. All the stuff that you want, you, the peace, the love, and the joy, that's because of the Holy Spirit. All of the power that you want in your life to do some of the things that they did in the book of Acts, it all comes from the Holy Spirit. All of the things that we desire, if we want to be conformed to the image of Christ, if we want the mind of Christ, that's all through the power of the Holy Spirit. So one of the things I like to pray is, Lord, increase my capacity for you. That's uh, one of the little statements that yeah. jumped out to me in that little booklet was, increase my capacity for more of you. I don't want to limit what you have for me and what you, I don't want to put up walls. I think a lot of us growing up um, certain ways kind of put up walls about, oh, I can, I don't want God to do that. I, or maybe, you know, not this. I just want to contain him. Well, I don't, I just want all of him, yep. especially living in this culture. I need more of him. So I pray that all the time. God, tear down the walls, increase my capacity for you. So here's a sample little prayer. Start out with just, uh, you know, turning John 15, 5 into a prayer. Heavenly Father, you're the vine. I'm only a branch. Only as I remain attached to you will I live a fruitful life. Apart from you, I can do nothing. I mean, he's the power supply. Fill me with your spirit. Guide me, teach me, comfort, counsel me. Give me the desire and the power to do what pleases you. That's Philippians 2, 13. Give me a little more, make me a little more like Jesus today. Give me the mind of Christ so I can think the way you think and love others the way you love them. Give me any spiritual gifts you want me to have and show me how to use them for your glory. Amen. What if we prayed that every day? Just said, Lord, I can't make it through the day without you. And by the way, you see how it ties in with surrender. I've just surrendered this area to you. My job, never surrendered that before. Well, I'm going to need the Holy Spirit now to empower me to do what you want me to do. And that brings us to repentance. Search me, O oh God, know my heart, test me, know my anxious thoughts, point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. This is important, isn't it? It's very important. And this is um, a real gift to us that he gives us, a gift of repentance. We get to say, Lord, I want to let go of all that. You get to let go of all the past, but you need to repent first. Yeah, and repent means make a U-turn. It means to think differently, to think again. I've rethought this, Lord. You're right. I'm wrong. When I was trying to determinedly live my own way, I just added pain upon pain upon hardship in my life. I want to go your way now. So I am surrendering it. I'm asking you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. But Lord, I've realized I'm thinking completely wrong. Would you please forgive me? Now, you'll see a list here of a whole bunch of things allowing God to reveal to you. But hopefully you've discovered that that this is why this is such a powerful part of your relationship with God, you have to allow God to examine you. You could read through this list. This is a list that came from a book from Anne Graham Lotz. Billy Graham's daughter wrote a book years ago on prayer, and a lot of these things came out of her book. Um, ingratitude, neglect of Bible reading and prayer, unbelief, lack of concern for the souls of others, greed, neglect of family, impurity, sexual immorality, racism, love of the world, material things, giving into addictions, compulsive behaviors, well, they don't all apply to us every day, but as you read through that list, you go, oof, this one applies to me today. Yeah, Lord, I'm, please forgive me. I'm wrong. I want to go the other way. Empower me with your spirit. I surrender that to you. Do you see how this all works together? I hope so. Hmm. Psalm 1912. This is a prayer made from that verse. Heavenly Father, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep me from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Oh, I want that. I think you do too. I want a relationship with Jesus. I want whatever he has planned for me. If you want that, would you say amen? Amen. Well, you realize we're going the wrong way. That's not going to happen. God, I just want to go the wrong way. Just bless that. No. I won't bless that. In fact, some of the hardship you're experiencing in your life, I want you to turn around. And I know I need to speed up. I didn't say okay. it. Okay. Number nine. Forgiveness. 
And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Yeah. So Jesus is saying, good, you've been praying. You've surrendered. You have asked the Holy Spirit to fill you. Realize you repented and you've asked for my forgiveness. Great job. Now, while you're doing that, while, you're, while that's still on your lips, now the same forgiveness you've asked me to pass on to you, pass that on to the people who've offended you. John, this is letting go of your right to be offended. Letting go of a place of revenge and saying, Lord, I'm not, you don't necessarily, it's not like you're saying what they did was okay and right, because it could be very sinful and wrong. That's why it hurts so much. But you let go, you allow God to handle them. Yeah, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I'll repay. You just don't, otherwise that bitterness will grow up and just consume you. Yeah, so here's a sample prayer. And I, and again, this is just our wording on this. You don't have to pray the exact words. These were not chiseled in stone, handed down on Mount Sinai. They're just an example. Loving Father, I choose to forgive so-and-so because you've forgiven me. I forgive them of the wrongs they've done to me, the pain and the hurt they've caused me. I surrender any bitterness that's grown in my heart. Mm, and I pray that you'll bless them today in the name of Jesus. Jesus told us to pray that, to do that, by the way. Pray for blessing for our enemies. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the desire and the power to do this. I can't do this without your help. You can't. I can't. We even started out, when we first started reading this, we made a list of people that yeah. apparently we'd been hanging on to because it was easy for us to remember something that happened in eighth grade or <laughs> 25 years ago or last month. You've got them too. There are things in our lives we go, Lord, I want you to forgive me, but I will never forgive her, not for what she said, never. Well, yeah, then you go back to that verse that says, if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you. So it's, this is critical. This is critical that we do this, and the, um, you will feel so clean mm. and healthy when you let go of these offenses and you forgive people. Finally, in step 10 and 11, praying for others and personal prayer requests, now I'm getting to my list. Well, John, why'd you go through all those others first? Well, think of how it changes my attitude. I'm talking to the God of the universe. I'm dealing with my own junk first. And by the way, when I've confessed my own junk, some of these things aren't on the list anymore. That brings us to the last one. Skip down to, and I think praying for others and personal prayer requests are pretty self-explanatory. So we'll go to step 12. Can we do that one? Sure. Thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Yeah. So make a list for things you're grateful for and thank God for them. Think of your house, your clothes, your car, your food, your kids, your spouse, your neighbors, school, freedom. Man, you can thank God for that every time. But in your outline here, in this little prayer guide, I also gave you eight or nine things that you could thank God for, even when things aren't going well. Like, I'm having the root canal, not feeling thankful. <laughs> Car broke down, money's tight, don't know how I'm going to pay for it, sitting at the auto shop. Not feeling thankful right now. Just got in a big fight with my spouse. I mean, no. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfect. Anyway. Uh, but we'll be talking about relationships next month. Yeah, next month. Okay. But the whole point is, think of these. These are things you give thanks for even then. Thank you, Lord, for causing all things to work together for good. I don't understand how. Don't have to. I don't understand how it works. I just have to have faith that it's true. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving all my sins, redeeming me from death and filling my life with good things. Do you know that even when I'm sitting at the doctor's office waiting for the root canal, I can still give God thanks for forgiving all my sins? So can you. Thank you, Lord, for giving me power, love, and a sound mind so I can deal with problems when they come. 
Thank you, Lord, for never leaving or forsaking me. You're going to go with me into that confrontation. You're going to go with me. What if we thank God for these things? So look, I know we gave you enough stuff to choke a mule here. This is a lot. Okay? But our goal wasn't to say you have to do all these every day or else you're not a Christian. That's not what we're saying. We're saying if you'd like to get a stronger grip with your prayer life and just get a new grip on this, then take this little guide and use one item. Maybe today God spoke to you about surrender. And you went, oh, I've never even prayed about that ever in my life. Maybe you have never prayed, Lord, deliver me from evil and protect me from temptation. First time in your life ever really meant it. Maybe you have never spent time, five minutes just praising God. Okay, take this sheet, try that, do that today. You don't have to go through all of it every day. But think how this can change your life if you're praying about whole different parts of your life and sections that are all interrelated. And hopefully you'll be greatly encouraged. Our email, my email's on there. We'd love to talk to you more about this. And I'm just grateful we could have this time together. And by the way, if you don't know what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus, we'd love to talk with you about that. That's what starts all this. Will you pray with me, please? Lord, I just thank you that Debbie and I could go through these 12 different components of a meaningful prayer life. Lord, I, I want everybody to talk to you, to celebrate your goodness, to praise you for who you are. Lord, we need your protection from the evil one. Lord, we need your direction in our life. We need to surrender every part of our lives to you because if we've, we run them on our own, we'll run them right into the ground. That's what we have been doing. And so God, we don't want to do that anymore. So it's all yours. We belong to you. And Lord, I give you thanks for this church. I give you thanks for your word. And I give you thanks that you're willing to meet with us, that you bend down to listen. The creator God of the universe would take time to listen to me. Amazing. So Lord, thanks for this time together. I pray, Lord, you've challenged each one of us in at least one of these areas. And we're gonna go and pray. We're gonna shut the door, turn off our phones, and spend a few minutes with you today praying about this. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray together right now. Amen.